grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. What a joy to have you worship with us today. Our hymn this morning is Guide Me, O Thy Great Jehovah, number 127 in the United Methodist Hymnal, and we will sing verses 1 and 2. these words from Jesus John 6 51 I am the living bread that came down from heaven whoever eats this bread will live forever and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh the word of God for the people of God thanks be to God this morning's affirmation of faith can be found on page 881 in the United Methodist hymnal please join me as we read the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the, from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you've had a joy in your life in the last week, something that's happened and you want to give God the glory and share it with us for our own inspiration and so we can celebrate with you, please put it in the chat over um, next to your uh, YouTube video. And if you have a prayer concern, something that you would like for us to lift in our prayers, share it there. Be careful. Should you not need to post something online, make sure that you just contact me later on and I will add them to the church prayers in a way that's safer. Let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you'd like to give to support the ministries of Carborough United Methodist Church, our address is 200 Hillsboro Road, Carborough, North Carolina, 27510. We thank you so much for your support.
Exodus 16, 1 through 18, Wilderness Food, Manna, and Quail. The whole Israelite community set out from Elam and came to the Sin Desert, which is located between Elam and Sinai. They set out on the 15th day of the second month after they had left the land of Egypt. The whole Israelite community complained against Moses and Aaron in the desert. The Israelites said to them, Oh, how we wish that the Lord had just put us to death while we were still in the land of Egypt. There we could sit by the pots cooking meat and eat our fill of bread. Instead, you brought us out to this desert to starve this whole assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to make bread rain down from the sky for you. The people will go out each day and gather just enough for that day. In this way, I'll test them to see whether or not they follow my instruction. On the sixth day, when they measure out what they have collected, it will be twice as much as they collected on the other days. When Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, This evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you will see the Lord's glorious presence, because your complaints against the Lord have been heard. Who are we? Why blame us? Moses continued, The Lord will give you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning because the Lord heard the complaints you made against him. Who are we? Your complaints aren't against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole Israelite community, Come near to the Lord because he's heard your complaints. As Aaron spoke to the whole Israelite community, they turned to look toward the desert, and just then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses, I've heard the complaints of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will have your fill of bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening a flock of quail flew down and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew all around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the desert surface were thin flakes, as thin as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? They didn't know what it was. Moses said to them, This is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Collect as much of it as you can eat, one omer per person. You may collect for the number of people in your household. The Israelites did as Moses said, some collecting more, some less. But when they measured it out by the omer, the ones who had collected more had nothing left over, and the ones who had collected less had no shortage. Everyone collected just as much as they could eat. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. This week I noticed on Facebook that one of our church members, Christine, had posted this meme, and it was one that made you think about the TV show All in the Family. I bet most of you are familiar with that show. And if you're not, you can catch it on reruns or you know go on one of your streaming services and, and watch that. It made me think about that because every week as the show uh, came on, Edith and Archie would sit together at their piano and Edith would play and together they would sing Those Were the Days. And they would sing about the past and all those things in the good old days that they loved and missed. And you know, we all have things in our past that we treasure, those things that uh, were part of our journey, those wonderful memories of uh, not just our growing up years, but maybe even our young adult years. And, you know, they're so special and important to us. Sometimes we even forget that not everything was wonderful. Sometimes we forget the difficult times and the hard times that we've been through and the suffering along the way. I think sometimes making it through those things um, kind of, is sort of like childbirth. Have you ever heard a woman say that um, she didn't remember how bad it hurt? 
Well, I think if we really try, we do. But for the most part, if you want to have another baby, you have to kind of put that aside and not dwell on the part that was painful so that you can get to the part that is joyful. And that's the bringing home of the baby. Well, this could be sort of like that. And so here they are. Uh, the Israelites, the Hebrew children have being freed from slavery, God has heard their cries and made a way for them to be free. They are, and, and not only that, by the way, but God also provided for them a way to have um, resources. So they were able to go around and gather from the Egyptians um, their jewelry, their gold and their silver and even clothing so that once they got to the promised land, the land that was flowing with milk and honey, they would have resources to live off of and to start their new lives. Well, you got to get there first. And so we're in chapter 16 today. If you back up to chapter 15, you will see that the they are partying, they are celebrating, they are singing praises because they have been delivered, because they made it through the sea, you know, the, the waters parted and they made it through and the Egyptians who were now had come to their senses sort of and realized what had happened and had gone after the slaves, their, what they thought were their slaves, didn't make it through to do that. And so the um, Hebrews are celebrating that they have been freed. And then something happens. They get hungry. You know, their bellies started to rumble and they wanted to know what was going, what have you done? Moses, what have you done? You have back there, back in Egypt, we had food. We were never hungry. There were always pots of meat and there were bread always around for us to eat. We were never hungry. You have brought us out here to die. But Moses is the one who brought them out there. God brought them out there. God delivered them. And they have forgotten that God provided. So far, God has provided for every need they have had. God intended for them to rely solely on God because God intended to provide. God was to be their provision. Now, sometimes we forget. Sometimes an immediate or current need makes us forget that God has always seen to our needs. I wonder sometimes if our, if in our impatience to get a need met, and you know, God meets us where we are. Uh, God has a plan for us, I believe, and sometimes we just cannot wait, and we seek to to feel that need and to make it happen. And then God meets us where we are. And I wonder what God might have done had we not been so impatient. And I think that's part of what we're encountering here today. We know that they complained, but I don't think it's just the complaining. I think it's the fact that they did not have patience to wait and see how God would provide for them. Now, patience is hard for us, or at least I know it is for me. Um, when our children were growing up, I would take them to school every day, and we would pray, usually in the car on the way to school. And I would always say to them, you know, I taught my children, uh, don't pray for mama to have patience. And every now and then they would. They would pray for mama to have patience. And I would stop and stop. You know that we get patience. You know, salvation is a gift from God. Patience you earn. Uh, you get patience by going through trials is what uh, I had always heard. And so I didn't really want them to pray for patience because I don't really want to go through any more trials. Um, but sometimes we long so much for something in the past that we forget the hard times. Sometimes we long so much 
for what's in the future or what we hope will be in the future that we miss what we have right now. If we put too much of our attention on the past or the future, we miss what is right in front of us right now, the moment that we are in. And what is in the moment right now? God. Now, to be sure, God was in the past and God will be in the future. But we don't want to miss God with us right now in the present. And sometimes we just need to hang on and wait and see how God is going to make a way for us, even when there seems to be no way. I wonder what God might have done had they not grown impatience and grum impatient and grumbled. And I'm trying not to be too hard on them because honestly, I think any of us would have done exactly what they did, or at least most of us would. Or maybe I should say I probably would. Um, I don't think many of us like to be hungry and have to wait for the food. I don't think we like to wait for many things, to be honest. <clears throat> but I do wonder, had they had more patience, would God have provided something different than the meal God did provide each day, manna and then quail? They ate this for a long time. You know, these lessons of having patience and waiting on God, waiting for God's provision, not trying to jump ahead of what God's doing, but having the patience to wait and know that God will provide. Because it is so easy for us to go backward to the way things were. But God is always moving us forward. I think it is good to remember the past. Um, to treasure some of it, to learn from some of it, but to live in the present, to prepare for the future, but live in the present, to continue to be ready for what comes later. God, you know, God is always moving us forward, but we're not supposed to just forget about the now because our now is important. We can trust God to provide. We do not need to hoard. You know, throughout this pandemic, especially in the beginning of the pandemic, uh, there was a lot of hoarding. People bought the grocery, the grocery store aisles emptied in the beginning, especially of things like toilet paper, because people were so afraid that it would all be gone and they would be without. I think this pandemic shows us a lot about um, where we've come as far as trusting God to provide. We just still aren't there 100% yet. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, God did. There have been things we've had to learn to do without, but nothing that was absolutely necessary. Um, even when the, it looked like we were going to go for a few days or maybe a week with a little bit less in gas, or it was going to be harder to get gas from the service stations, people again lined up and had to get it, whether they needed it or not, were so afraid that it wouldn't be available. Um, a lot of times people who did need it were having trouble getting because others who had could not be satisfied with that and trust that when they had need that God would provide. It's just a lesson we keep having to learn over and over and over again. I wonder, will we ever get it? You know, we need to learn to share and to trust that when we have need, God will provide. We're in this life together. And you know, our gospel lesson today says that Jesus is the living bread that came down from heaven. If you receive him, if you receive him, your need is met. For Christians, Jesus is the way. 
a relationship with God through Jesus Christ is the way for our needs to be met. And that relationship is everything. It is the best of everything God has for us. Treasure that. Trust God. For the Hebrew people, the Exodus was that big moment in time, the turning point. That is where everything goes back to. Is that was that memory marker. You know, that's when time changed, when everything changed. And for Christians today, for us, it is um, the empty tomb. It's, it's the cross and the empty tomb for us. This side of the cross and the empty tomb, that's our marker. That is where everything changed for us. That provision is more than enough for all of our needs. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bishop Fairley has asked that congregations in the North Carolina Conference of the United Methodist Church be intentional about adding more prayer time in our lives and in the church. We have held seasons of prayer here at Carborough United Methodist Church, off and on for the past 15 months, and we'll be finding ways to incorporate more prayer time in our lives. To that end, please listen to this brief message on prayer. Thank you. Prayer for me is the ways that I find that quiet anchor inside and in that stillness I will often feel or hear a presence with me. Sometimes I hear words, sometimes it's just a sensory experience that I know that I'm accompanied by spirit. 
And in that experience is, is the message, I'm here and all is well. I'm here and all is well. And whatever brings you to that sort of inner experience and inner knowing is the deepest, uh, for me, the deepest practice of prayer. That could be in the garden, digging with your hands in the earth. It could be quietly sitting on a meditation cushion. cushion. It could be reading a prayer book. All of us have got a thousand ways to use our bodies and ourselves to find that place of inner stillness. And some of those activities are physical actions. Fly fishing can be prayer. Washing the dishes can be prayer. Prayer is when we move our bodies in such a rhythmic way that we still our minds. And when our minds become a bit still, we can hear the comforting message of our God. What comforting messages have you heard? Um, in these days, it is cutting through the cacophony of outer chaos, which is real and difficult, but it's not what is most real. What is most real is that God is here, and if we stay faithfully on the journey, our work will help God create something fresh in our midst. So I, so the, the prayer keeps my heart resilient and at, at some level of equanimity, uh, peacefulness in the midst of great conflict. That unless I can remain peaceful, if, if I become very agitated in a difficult time, uh, what people see is not my faith, they see my agitation. And this is a great lesson for me, but it is prayer that helps me remain calm and centered so that I can keep working for the good. As if I become bitter, resentful, despairing, um, it dims grace's work in me. It doesn't aid grace's work. And then God leaves, right? And God is not near. God never leaves. God is always near. God does a loving parent leave because a child is having a difficult moment? No. A uh, loving parent is there holding and waiting and teaching and guiding. And there'll be another moment and another moment and another moment. Uh, we do not have an, a, a revengeful reproachful, shaming God. We have a God who's a steady rock. In fact, I, I love the word faithfulness in Christianity never refers to us and our actions. Faithfulness is the quality of our God. Our God is faithful to us. Our God is always with us. We're the ones who forget. We're supposed to be faithful. Yeah, we, 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 uh, I, I love the story of Peter and it you know, Peter is the great example because Peter kept forgetting and Peter kept denying. And even at the very end, when, when uh, all the Christian Jews of Rome were being executed, uh, Peter somehow gets out of the city and he's fleeing the great, the great city and the Holocaust behind him. And the risen Christ appears and says to Peter, Peter, where are you going? And Peter turns around and goes back to Rome and faces his death. And what I hear in that is that as Christians, we just need to return one more time than we leave. Say that again. We just, that Peter teaches us that we need to come back to Christ one more time than we leave. One more time that we run away. Because that's all God asks. God doesn't ask from, for us perfection. God asks us to keep trying. Just keep trying. Just keep trying. Just keep trying. Then repentance is kind of almost like I keep returning? Yep. 
Repentance is I keep waking up, realizing what happened, as Peter does. Peter wakes up from the denial, realizes what happened, and weeps and comes back, which is in the Gospel of Matthew, because not because um, Matthew wants to castigate and shame Judas. Matthew wants to contrast the two responses that we might have. Judas wakes up and doesn't believe in a loving God, and he ends the journey. I a lot of those people. And he ends the journey. Peter wakes up to what happened and what he did, and he weeps and he comes back. And Matthew wants to teach us that on the first path, we we're going to wake up and be horrified and run away, probably. But always remember Peter's example, that we too can wake up, weep for what we did, and come back. And God's waiting. God's always waiting. Now go in peace to serve God and your neighbor in all that you do. And may the blessings of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you and keep you now and forevermore. Amen.